Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our live webinar, How to Get More Out of Your Sponsored Updates, brought to you by the LinkedIn Marketing Solutions Team. I'm excited to introduce our speakers today, LinkedIn's own Cassandra Clark and Alex Rin. Before we get started, I just want to go over a couple housekeeping items. You are all muted by default, so if you have any questions, please enter them into the Q&A box on the right of your screen. We're excited to announce we'll be joined by Celine Tyler, Senior Product Manager for Sponsored Updates during the Q&A session, and she and our speakers will answer all the questions they can at the end of the presentation. We'd also like you to know we'll be sharing the slides and the recording from today's session with you via email within the next few days. Finally, please do take the time at the end of the webinar to fill out our survey. Your feedback is very important to us, and we want to ensure that your webinar experience with us continues to get better. And now I'm pleased to hand it over to our speakers to get us started. Go ahead. Great. Uh, hi there, my name is Alex, and I am the external voice of LinkedIn Marketing Solutions, managing our social channels and also the LinkedIn Marketing blog. If you haven't checked it out, you should. It's pretty great. Um, thanks for joining us today to get an inside look at how LinkedIn drives leads with sponsored updates. We hope to provide you with a quick checklist of sponsored updates best practices you can follow to achieve your marketing goals. So let's get started. So what exactly are sponsored updates? Sponsored updates are LinkedIn's flagship native advertising format. With sponsored updates, you can publish relevant content straight to the LinkedIn feed and reach a targeted audience of professionals beyond just your LinkedIn company, company page followers. As many of you know, all audiences are not created equal. If you're a B2B brand or a high-value B2C brand, there's a good chance you'll want to reach an audience of professionals, influencers, business decision makers, and indiv individuals with above average purchasing power. Uh, and LinkedIn is the perfect platform for that. Um, in fact, four to five LinkedIn members impact business decisions within their organizations. And LinkedIn members tend to have a higher purchasing power and levels of education than the average U.S. adult online. Here we break down the parts of a sponsored update. The number one best practice when it comes to the introdu introduction text and content marketing in general is to make sure you're offering something of value to your audience. Social media is not the place to make the hard sell. Instead, I recommend focusing your content efforts on providing value in the feed. Use CTAs within your updates that drive people to click. Focus on how the piece of content will really benefit your audience. And then let your landing page do the heavy converting. Now, um, one thing to note on the previous slide is actually if you're using rich media, which you should, you'll only have the option to edit the introduction text, but I'll come back to that again later. All right, compared to our B2C counterparts, uh, we're dealing with a lengthy and more complex buyer's journey. Um, in fact, a recent Forrester survey found that most pro prospects could be up to 90% complete with the buyer's journey before they even reach out to sales, which leaves sales with only 10% of the time to actually engage prospects in a meaningful conversation. So it's up to marketers to fill this gap with relevant B2P content via the most effective channels. Seventy-four percent of B2B buyers choose the company that was first to help them in their purchase pro process by providing useful and relevant content. Therefore, it's more important than ever to keep your content in front of your target audience as they make their way through the buyer's journey. But good content doesn't become great until you have a solid distribution plan set up. And that's where sponsor updates come in. They serve as an effective way to raise awareness, build relationships, and drive quality leads. It's also the perfect opportunity for your company to exhibit thought leadership. There's industry thought leadership, which is a point of view on news, trends, in a given vertical, product thought leadership, which consists of how-tos and best practices, and then organizational thought leadership, which is uh, company culture and talent development. Direct sponsored content is actually a feature of sponsored, sponsored updates which gives brands the ability to personalize and test content in the newsfeed without having to originate posts on their LinkedIn company page. Through direct sponsored content, companies can make their content 
more relevant by sending personalized messages to specific audiences. It gives them the ability to test and retest a variety of content in real time until they get it right. Doing so allows for enhanced performance as they aim to connect with audiences, nurture relationships, and generate quality leads. Dark Sponsor content also lists limitations on who can and cannot post in the feed. Because content doesn't have to start on the company page, different business units can try content specific for their audience with the company page administrator's approval. So before I dive into our four best practices, um, I want to quote uh, Anne Hanley, author of Everybody Writes and the Chief Content Officer at Marketing Prof, who says, we, de we don't need more content, we need better content. Remember that your audience is on a journey. They're online and on their devices looking for insights. It's best to try and meet them halfway with helpful content, and you might just end up sparking a conversation that builds your brand's reputation or brings in your next customer. So, without further ado, here are our four best practices we keep in mind on LinkedIn Marketing Solutions team when we publish our, our sponsored updates. The first is that visual is the new headline. Um, David Ogilvy once said, once you've written your headline, you've spent 80 cents of your dollar. We say that visual is the new headline. To truly capture your audience's attention in an increasingly noisy space, you'll need to select rich, eye-catching imagery that matches the messaging of your update. You also want to keep the text on your imagery to a minimum. 75% um, of sponsor update engagements actually happen on mobile devices, so you want to make sure that your content looks really great on small screens. Um, but getting more creative with your imagery and moving beyond stock photos, as we kind of mentioned there, by getting more creative, it doesn't have to be a costly venture. There's sites like Canva and Haiku Deck, which actually has a really cool integration with SlideShare, um, and other great free resources out there. If you have a little bit more budget, Photoshop and platforms like Visage are great tools for finding and editing compelling images. For a little bit more information on the optimal size of your sponsored updates, I put a little URL there, um, adsex.liasset.com, for a more thorough list of guidelines. Keep it short and sweet. Uh, we have found that updates that are short, meaning 150 characters or fewer, tend to perform best. Uh, it's also important to focus on the benefit your target audience can hope to attain by clicking on the link. Um, finally, you, you can always give it the, would I click this test? If the answer is no, you may want to consider spicing up the intro text with a stat or an unexpected point of view. Here's an example of a top performing sponsored update we published when we recently launched LinkedIn Lead Accelerator, which is our newest solution which helps marketers nurture prospects across the web uh, with relevant content through targeted display and social ads, including sponsored updates. Uh, as you can see, the imagery is pretty compelling and the intro text is concise and to the point. We've also found that lifting short stats and quotes out of larger pieces of what we call big rock content uh, make for really engaging sponsored updates. Using numbered lists or surprising stats or figures are really great um, attention grabbing tactics. And of course, everyone's more likely to share content that makes them appear more uh, in the know. Here is another top performing image from our LinkedIn Lead Accelerator launch. Uh, we highlighted a, a compelling stat and uh, ensured the intro text clearly spelled out what's in it for the audience, or rather, why they should click. Creating a variety of content is also it's a good way to avoid creative fatigue. Um, it also allows for multiple A-B tests. On the LinkedIn Marketing Solutions team, we're always testing, whether it's background colors, branded versus unbranded, or the specific verbiage that we use. Uh, a question I get sometimes is how long should you let your A-B tests run? Typically, we recommend 50 clicks or 1,000 impressions. Ending it before then will most likely produce um, inaccurate or kind of an inconclusive reading. As I mentioned earlier, you don't have to break the bank to create a variety of images. There's plenty of complementary, complementary tools out there like Canva and Haiku Deck that can help. Um, and if you don't think you have enough content to create multiple images, a great place to start looking is your company website.
Here are some examples of uh, imagery that we pulled out of a recent thought leadership ebook we created. Uh, we listed a compelling quote and stat. Um, then, again, the other advantage to including thought leaders within your imagery and ebooks for that matter is that they're more likely to share it with their own personal networks. And now I will hand it over to Cass. Thanks, Alex. Um, so next, we want to walk you through an example of a series of tests we ran using our um, direct sponsor content feature. Um, we'll share how we ran it and some insights we gained. Um, so as Alex mentioned, in February, we launched a new product called LinkedIn Lead Accelerator. It was a big initiative, initiative for us in Q2, and we wanted to take this as an opportunity to really challenge our team to find the, the perfect sponsored update. So our demand gen teams and our content teams joined forces and built out an A-B testing plan that would take place over the course of about three months. Um, here are some things that we tested. All right, so our first example is a test we ran on the use of images. A little background here, this test was interesting. We thought we had a pretty good gut feeling based off performance from previous campaigns we ran that images of people were always the stronger performing creative. So we wanted to run some tests to confirm that hypothesis. So as you see here, week one, we ran a test with a female marketer against this image of a funnel. And to our surprise, the funnel won. So we thought, mm, that's interesting. Maybe it was the person. Maybe we should try a new test with a different marketer. And to our surprise again, the funnel won. So two learnings we gained out of this. Um, one is always be testing, because your intuition isn't always 100% right. And a variety of things can affect performance, your audience, your subject matter, copy, images, et cetera. Um, we also discovered the reason why the funnel won is that the image of the funnel had such a strong correlation to the message we were trying to convey. Um, accelerate your leads through the marketing funnel. So it's always best to try to find an image that syncs well with your copy or your message. Um, as marketers, sometimes our resources are strained and using stock images are an easy solution to that. But like Alex touched on earlier, get creative with your stock images. If possible, try to leverage one that can help you tell your story. Um, so the, the next one we wanted to run a series of call to action tests. And this was an example of a test that we continue to iterate on. Um, we picked a few of our most commonly used call to actions and tested them against each other. So week one, we tested get started versus discovered, get started one. Week two, we tested get started versus learn, learn more, get started one. And then after week three, get started one. So we got a good concept that get started was a strong performing call to action. Um, what we wanted to do next um, is understand how weak our weakest performer was because in week one discover had performed so poorly so in week four we did um, introducing versus discover um, we found that introducing had an 87 percent higher engage rate engagement rate over discover so lesson learned here don't ever use discover um, but of course you should test it <laughs> All right, here we wanted to take some of our best practices that we discussed earlier, keeping copy short and sweet, using snackable stats, um, and put it to the test. I'm always preaching that less is more when it comes to copies, so I particularly liked this test because now I had the proof to back it up. Um, here we tested a stat against a typical intro text. Both ads explain what the value proposition is. However, I think it's no surprise here that the ad with the stat um, had the higher engagement rate. Using the stat, increased engagement by 176%. I can't emphasize enough how impactful and easy it is to make these slight tweaks and in your copy and dramatically increase your performance. So week two, um, again, we took the same approach here. We had one descript intro and one intro that was something around 65 characters. Um, very short and to the point. We saw a 148% increase in engagement when using the shorter, more concise intro copy. Um, okay, so next we thought it would be helpful to share some examples from other companies. I'm going to walk you through some of the top sponsor updates ran on LinkedIn this year based on engagement rate. So engagement rate is uh, measured by clicks and social actions.
Our first example is from Athena Health. One thing they do really well here is they are relevant to their audience. Career advice is always a trending topic on LinkedIn, and thought leadership pieces get a lot of engagement on our platform. They know this, and they do a good job of leveraging that. They also make their content really pop with a concise and compelling intro and title. There's a great click tease also in the description. It starts with getting the reader hooked, but does not reveal too much, and trails off with a dot, dot, dot. So the next is from American Express. They are consistently one of our top performers on LinkedIn. Um, if you're ever looking for some inspiration, we highly encourage you to watch what they're doing. Um, we see a common theme in our top performers. Content that offers advice on how to be successful gets high engagement. After all, that's what people are coming to LinkedIn to do. Uh, one thing that you notice here is American Express eliminates the intro. Keeping the intro short or eliminated it all together can really boost clicks to your website. Just make sure your headline is really punchy and accurate if you're going to eliminate the intro copy. Um, you'll also notice that the title states up front that the article is going to be short and snackable, only five things. These list types of content perform really well. The reader knows what they're signing up for before they even click. The next one is from NetApp, a storage and data management company. Starting the introduction text with an engaging and thought-provoking question such as this is a great way to grab the reader's attention. A very recognizable Myers-Briggs image clearly signals what the reader is about to learn. As we saw in our image test earlier with a funnel, an image that conveys the gist of the article will boost the performance of the content. And again, leadership is a highly engaging topic on LinkedIn. We'll touch on this in a few slides, but I want to briefly talk about it here. Um, even if you're a lead gen marketer, uh, upper funnel content about industry trends or leadership will create brand awareness first. Boosting brand awareness will help you with your conversion metrics down the line. All right, Intel IT Center is also one of our most successful marketers quarter after quarter. Uh, first of all, Internet of Things is a popular to topic in their tech audience. Intel is leveraging this topic knowing it's important to the audience they're trying to reach. Um, Again, we see another attention-grabbing image here. Um, it matches the topic, which is type, top of the hype cycle. Calling out another well-known brand immediately builds credibility. In this case, it's a well-known research brand. And another theme here that we consistently see, uh, the intro calls out the value proposition right away. Clear introduction stating what the reader will get themselves into by clicking. It will help and boost your click-through rate. The next one from Salesforce is a really interesting and unique take on branding. This content is not about recruiting, but really using content to strengthen the Salesforce recruitment brand. And of course, since career advancement is a big topic on LinkedIn, this has performed very well. This update uses a lot of the same trends we've been talking about. It starts with an engaging question, keeps the description concise, but not giving away too much to encourage the reader to click through and also using another reputable brand in the industry to establish brand credibility. Um, the next one is from Smart Recruiters. A couple interesting things they do here. Um, it's another good example of someone eliminating the introduction text and drawing the attention to the title, which is a very engaging title. Um, Another interesting thing they do here that I want to point out, in the description they are using the first person language and it adds a conversational tone which ties into tapping into conversations on LinkedIn. Sparking a conversation is a great way to create engagement with your target audience. And last but not least is Dell. Um, they are another consistent top performer on LinkedIn. Um, they do a really good job of asking themselves, why would my audience read this? This is a thought leadership piece with a clear call out to a recognizable leader in the industry. Um, the update starts with a question that grabs the target audience's attention. From the first sentence, the value proposition to the reader is clear. Um, four ways is a short snackable list that has unique industry insights and is one of the best ways to boost brand awareness. Next, I just want to quickly touch on budget allocation for campaigns. Uh, here at LinkedIn, we use sponsored updates predominantly for lead generation. It's how Alex and I measure the success of our sponsored updates overall. Uh, however, if we only ran 100% lead generation campaigns, we really wouldn't be setting ourselves up for success. 
It's important to have campaigns that also drive brand awareness uh, to move people into your marketing funnel. So what we found has worked well for us in hitting our goals while trying to strike the right balance of other campaigns that may not be lead gen uh, is a 70-30 split where 70% or 70 of our budget goes to our top lead generation performers. These are usually our big rock ebooks, like the Sophisticated Guide to Marketing on LinkedIn that Alex and team produce. This ensures that we are driving the legion numbers we need to hit while still giving us flexibility to drive other marketing initiatives like brand awareness. Um, we also recommend that you start each campaign with a large budget for the first week or so so you can reach a large enough audience to understand how that campaign will perform. And then you can adjust your allocation up or down after a week based on what you're looking for. This could depend on other campaigns you may be running, performance, or your overall goals. And with that, I'll wrap it up with a checklist for success, a quick summary of some things that we discussed today. Um, do always vary your creative. Keep it short and relevant to your target audience. Highlight insightful statistics that will help your audience. A-B test and iterate as you go. Don't limit yourself to just plain stock photos. Try to get creative with them. Or um, if you have the budget, try to you know customize your own. Use the word discover. Don't do that. And use copy-heavy imagery. All right, so next we are going to open it up to Q&A. Um, like Michelle stated earlier, we have Celine on hand. She is our product manager for sponsored updates. Okay, guys, I'm taking a little bit of time to read through some of the questions that are coming through and also take the time to ask any questions that you have. Um, so just to quickly answer, um, I've, I've gotten a few questions about the, the links that we mentioned. So this um, presentation will be shared with you where we have the ad spec link and then we will also add the links to the stock photo um, additional sites for you guys. I'm seeing a lot of questions about that so I wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Um, so one question I have here is from Waven Dean and the question is how often should one post on LinkedIn? This is a great question and we get this a lot. Um, so our recommendation when it comes to organic updates is about one to three a day. So keeping a steady stream of content to engage your company page followers. And it, when it comes to sponsored updates, uh, there is no frequency recommendation as much, although I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, our recommendation is having four updates running simultaneously and then continuously testing them to ensure you're cycling out the ones that are not working and adding in the new ones. This will allow you to reach your target audience um, most effectively. And we also see that the useful life of content is um, at least four weeks, which is longer than what most people think. Um, and there are some evergreen content that we're seeing that works really well. But when it comes to the optimal performance, we're seeing that four weeks of keeping a sponsored updates active is probably a good rule of thumb to follow. Uh, we have another question about how big an audience needs to be, and I'm actually seeing quite a few questions about that here. Um, so the answer for that is um, we, we generally recommend, um, I believe, over 300,000 um, you know, as, as a good starting point. In order for you to start general and be able to see what kind of audience your content clicks with, um, and so being able to best match your content to your audience, and then you can start customizing from there. Maybe start breaking out your campaigns to get them more specific. Use direct sponsored content to make them even more personalized to the target audience. But we generally recommend starting with a big number so that you can have some statistically significant um, you know, campaign stats to work off of. And um, another question about mobile um, aspects coming from I don't want to butcher your name. I want to say Sohail. I'm sorry if I mispronounced already. So if you go to um, the LI Aspects page, which we will send the link of, you will also see um, information about mobile as well. But we generally recommend the 800 by 400 will work well on all formats. 
Okay, so we have a great um, intro question. I'm, I'm really glad you asked this, Kimball. Um, and I've seen this question coming through from a few people as well. So the question is, how do we actually place a sponsored update on the LinkedIn platform? Uh, we actually have a webinar on this uh, called Sponsored Updates Demo Day. If you Google it, you will be able to see that we are going through step-by-step -step guide as to how to create a sponsored update. So the short answer as a teaser, um, and I'll leave it with a dot, 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 is that you can start by going to your company page um, and sponsoring content on your company page that you might have already published. Um, and another way to do it is through direct sponsored content, as Alex said, which would be through the campaign manager. And in order to reach that, you would go to linkedin.com slash ads. All right. Um, Kelly Alexander has a question, and I'm not sure if I understood the gist of the question here, so I'm going to take an attempt, and if you have a follow-up question, please follow through. So the question is, can we target business, business owners by demo, location, and industry? The answer is yes, um, absolutely. If so, is this paid ad only, and does it uh, go into their feed or PM? So there's different products. Um, that can address all of these needs. So if you would like to reach them in their inbox, sponsored email would be the right product to do it. And it has the exact same targeting, um, accurate targeting information as sponsored updates does, but it would go to their inbox instead of the feed. So if you choose sponsored updates, however, uh, the sponsored updates would go to their feed. You can also use our unpaid product, which is company pages, and you're, you can choose which followers uh, will see your company page update as well. So we have all three um, flavors, and I really hope that it answers your question. So another question is from Derek. I've actually, um, you know, I think this is a really great question. Um, so your question was, examples you showed are from big brands. Do you have a strategy for emerging companies? And the answer is absolutely yes. I think what um, Cass talked about earlier when it comes to dividing your budget into the 70-30 um, is especially important for emerging companies. Um, and you know you can find more examples through the past webinars we've done, so you can kind of search through those as well. Um, so if you're working in the tech, tech vertical, we've done uh, one webinar with Dell where, they, uh, where the speaker was actually speaking to how to um, prioritize your resources as an emerging company to successfully participate in content marketing. But if you don't have the time, that is cool too. I'm going to give a teaser here. So the idea is um, best practices are still applicable to um, emerging companies. So I would take everything that CAF talked about and apply it to your company page and sponsored updates because something that pops out will pop out um, if you word it correctly, if you have the right imagery, et cetera. However, I would think about um, splitting your mix more into upper funnel content so that you gain that brand awareness. So focusing on snackable content, uh, unique insights coming from your company is very important instead of rushing into lead gen right away, coming from a company that uh, people may not have as much awareness around. So I think I already answered this. Um, how frequently do you recommend changing creative over time? As I was saying, we usually see that um, a life of a sponsored update is approximately four weeks, after which we start seeing tapering um, of a click-through rate. However, I would recommend testing this for your content because some content is more evergreen than others. So once you start seeing um, the click-through um, taper off, I, have, I would recommend either switching out the content if you have the resource to do that, or using audience expansion feature, uh, which with the click of a button will also extend your reach to similar audiences and allow you to discover similar audiences. This will allow you to prevent content fatigue and reach new audiences. Oh, great question from Kathy. Can I change the text in the update that is below the headline? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, if you hover over, you will be able to change everything um, that gets posted. And again, if you would like to know more, I would highly recommend you to check out our 
um, sponsored updates demo day webinar where we went through this step by step. Sorry, looking through questions. This is awesome, you guys. Keep them coming. Um, so I have a question from Art here, which is very interesting. Do you have any research prior to creating content for initial A-B testing, or do you start by guessing? So um, I guess my um, one line here for when it comes to content marketing is that it's, more, it's an art and a science at the same time. So the best practices we mentioned here, and you know, Art, I would highly recommend checking out our other webinars. We continuously pump out these best practices, both through our webinars as well as our eBooks. So I would highly recommend looking through the best practices that we compiled there, and that could be a great starting point for you. But as Cass pointed out earlier, um, you know, starting with that and then challenging that against what your gut feeling tells you about your um, audience is very important. This will allow you to, you know, see if your gut feeling is right. And sometimes it is. So the example that Cass mentioned, for example, we had a gut feel that, um, images of people always works better, but what we've seen in the example is that our gut feeling was not right. So I would highly recommend starting with our best practices and challenging that, challenging that against your gut feel. And just keep testing. Um, another question I have is, what do you mean by copy-heavy imagery? So what we're seeing is that, for example, if you have a very busy infographic that you might sponsor um, and, you know, if it gets really shrunk down, it might be hard for people to discern what the imagery is. So we would recommend that even if it's an infographic you're sharing, uh, make sure that the image is um, highly discernible and visible to, to the reader, and you can do that by using our um, this, um our preview tool. So we have another question about um, targeting, and I, I hope I sort of kind of answered this for you guys already. Uh, what targeting types, options, tactics have has uh, worked well? Um, so again, what we always recommend to our advertisers is starting with a broader audience. And obviously, don't go too broad as in, you know, target everybody in the U.S. Um, you can limit it by the industry that you are in or the job function or the seniority. So definitely have um, some sort of a limit as to, you know, who you're targeting. But start as broad as you possibly can that your budget allows. And then our, um, our campaign manager tool will show you what audiences engage most. So you can use that as your base point in starting to target your campaigns and maybe even splitting them up into different campaigns so you can tailor your content to the right audience. And then to discover even more audiences, you can use audience expansion, um, and this will allow you to find um, you know, even more similar-minded audiences that your campaign will work well for. Um, and I'll chime in a little bit here. One thing that we've tested uh, that has performed pretty well for us. Uh, we're trying to test out building out some persona-based content. So we have two guides right now, the Demand Gen Marketer's Guide and the Brand Marketer's Guide. And we have done a lot of work in trying to tailor um, finding the right audience in our um, uh, targeting platform to tailor to the different guides. And, and we're doing it by titles. And the audience expansion helps us find more of those titles that would be relate to each of those specific personas. And we've had really high engagement rates with that. All right, guys, we're sorting through the questions. There's a lot of questions coming through, so we're, we're um, catching up. Um, Bob has a question that says, can you speak to the importance of audience targeting as a direct correlation of engagement success? I mean, for the, us, that's huge. Um, you always want to make sure that the content you are building is to a relevant audience, right? So you want to make sure that your um, targeting is, is just as sophisticated as the content that you're putting out there. And, and we have done a lot of targeting tests behind the scenes that we didn't really touch on here, but um, it's, it's very important to us to make sure that we are, are hitting the right audience, especially 
um, because our sponsored update success is so driven on um, lead gen. Uh, so we want to make sure we are finding that audience that is, is ready to convert as a lead. Awesome. And Chad has a question about, can I post sponsored updates to people who are not already following my company page? That's exactly what sponsored updates is supposed to do, is allow you to reach your target audience that's beyond your followers in the feed. Um, so again, you know, if you want to know more, I would highly recommend going into the demo day webinar we've done. Um, and just, you know, based on um, the feedback we're getting here, we might do an encore of that. <laughs> Um, so Art has a question about trending topics on LinkedIn. Um, so again, if you check out our previous webinars, we've done one for tech vertical and one for finance vertical. Uh, one was with BlackRock on, on the FinServe um, financial services industry, and then a Dell webinar um, on the tech industry where we actually talk about trending topics for those industries. So if you are in those industries, um, you can check out those webinars to see more. And you know, um, if we when we do um, industry specific events in art, please feel free to give us that feedback. If you're looking um, for more deeper dive in a certain industry, we'll take that feedback and do more webinars in in that area. Um, so I have a question from Derek here. Um, our sales team is always asking who's engaging with our campaign so they can follow up. What's the most efficient way to follow up? So I would recommend that you use lead generation after a sponsored update in order to capture those leads on your landing page. So when they come to your landing page, um, you know, I would vary up your content and some of it could be non-gated content so that they can, you know, the, um, those people can really engage with uh, the content that you have on your um, landing page, but you can have some of your content be gated, and we usually leave that for heavier content, like white papers, research papers, et cetera, or eBooks. And um, we would highly recommend switching up your content um, so that you have some lead gen initiatives and then follow up directly based on the, based on the leads you're connect, uh, collecting there. Um, so Jeff has a question about hyper-targeted campaigns. Um, so, you know, I would say, again, my best practice there is being able to personalize as, as much as possible when it comes to hyper-targeted campaigns um, because you have the luxury of making it as personal as you can, you know, maybe calling out the specific city that you're targeting. So, you know, I've seen great success with, hey, San Francisco, did you know XYZ type of content that works really well. And then if you want to scale your um, reach, we would again recommend uh, going into audience expansion so that you can discover similar audiences and you're able to reach your uh, impression or click goals. So Zach has a question about any um, advice or information about posts in general, and I'm assuming this means um, organic updates. Um, Zach, we will have a webinar coming up on company page best practices. So when that comes up, um, you know, please please dial in, and we'll go through 101 of um, company page updates as well. Again, catching up on questions, one minute. Um, so Art has another question about um, case studies. Yes, we have plenty of case studies on uh, marketing.linkedin.com that you can definitely share with your clients. Um, this one is a quick question that I would like to answer. Is there a way to modify an ad that's generated by link, uh, clicking sponsor from a company page? Unfortunately, there is no way of modifying. You would have to delete and start again. Yeah, so in the interest of time, we're actually going to take two more questions. Yeah, the question um, here is, um, if 
um, an update isn't performing well, do you recommend ending um, sponsoring it? Uh, so yes, the, the short answer would be yes. Um, the longer answer would be to challenge it with um, another challenger through direct sponsored content to see what's not performing well. It could be the imagery, it could be the call to action that's not strong enough, it could be the title that's not um, grabbing the attention. So I, you know, I would recommend yes, um, ending sponsoring that one, but you know, really dive into what might be the reason for it. Um, a question about um, account-based marketing, and I think you know the quick uh, the quick answer to this is using our um, using our targeting by targeting um, through companies and through company names would be the closest I would get to um, account-based marketing, and then you can use audience expansion to find similar companies to the ones that you're targeting if you're looking for that scale. Uh, I, I've talked a lot about audience expansion, so I think this is a very valid question uh, that I should answer. Is audience expansion an extra charge? Absolutely not. You just click a button and it expands your campaign to similar audiences. Um, so for the webinars we've previously hosted, what would be the best place for them to reach at Google? <laughs> yeah. uh, we have them on our YouTube channel, the LinkedIn Marketing Solutions, and all of the webinars are listed on there. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, with that, um, I'm sorry, we will have to wrap up. Really appreciate your time, um, and hopefully we'll see you in the next webinars. And please give us feedback on, um, on this webinar at the, end of, um, at the end of the show. And we will make sure that you know, some of your ideas get incorporated into our next webinars, and we can do encores of some of the webinars we've done if uh, we see rec you know, recommendations there. Thank you so much.